adult court, juvenile court. What's the difference? Hi, I'm Jeff Hampton with the Hampton Law Firm. Thank you for joining us on our YouTube channel today. I wanna to talk to you today about the difference between adult court and juvenile court. What is the difference? How is the standard, particularly under Texas law? If you wait around to the end of this video, I'll also give you a free ebook, what to do if you have been charged with a crime in Texas. Okay, let's jump right into this. Now, listen, I'm gonna first identify adult criminal court. What are the standards in adult court? And then we'll jump into juvenile. Along the way, I'm gonna answer some general questions that people ask, and I'm gonna make some distinctions between adult court and juvenile court, okay? And most of this is gonna be specific to Texas law, and much of it I'm gonna talk about examples in the Tarrant County system, which is in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. You're talking about in the Tarrant County, Dallas County area of some of examples, some examples that I've dealt with at our law firm, all right? Now, what is the purpose of the criminal justice system in adult criminal court? Well, there's three main things. When you're in adult criminal court, they're looking for punishment, they're looking for rehabilitation and deterrence. Now, the reality of it is though, that can be open to interpretation about which one of those is important and in what order they are, okay? But that is generally the purpose of the adult criminal justice system. Now, the question that people ask is if I'm an adult, if I'm, if I'm over, if in, in Texas that would be 17 or older, will I be arrested? Am I going to be arrested? Well, generally the answer to that is yes. If you've been investigated for a crime, you will be arrested unless it's a class C misdemeanor. So for the most part, all class B, class A misdemeanors and into the felony range end up involving a warrant for your arrest if you end up, if the police end up having probable cause to arrest you, okay? Now, there is this possibility you can avoid an arrest under certain circumstances. There is something under Texas law called a waiver of magistrate, which there is an opportunity if you're working with an attorney that does bonding and knows how to do this process, you can sometimes avoid going to jail by doing what is the equivalent of a walkthrough by getting processed in and out without actually going to jail. But that's very discretionary and it doesn't always turn out that way, all right? Now, the court system in, in the adult system is very prosecutor-driven, justice-driven, not probation-driven. And what I mean by that, all negotiations to how to resolve an adult case, adult criminal case, must be through your criminal attorney and the assistant district attorney that's assigned to the case. And as a result of that, that can take years to resolve sometimes. Depending on how backed up the court system is, it can take quite a while to do that, all right? Now, felony charges in the adult system must be indicted. They are required, particularly in Texas law. Every felony in Texas must be indicted by a grand jury. And that grand jury is acts as a filter to try to determine what cases should move forward and which should not. Now that can be a good thing for you if you're in the adult system because your attorney might be able to gather some evidence and make a presentation, an evidence packet presentation to the grand jury that might result in the lowering of your charge to a misdemeanor or maybe no billing that case, okay? But the juvenile system does not have that process. So the juvenile system does not have a grand jury process uh, to consider when you're looking at a possible felony juvenile case, all right? Now, also, you always have the right to a jury trial in an adult system, always. You always have the right to a jury trial. One of the basic premises of our Constitution is you have a right to a jury trial, to be judged uh, by citizens, th those that are supposed to be fair and impartial to your situation. So you always have that right. And then finally, here's the thing. There are, s are several ways to be able to get a uh, a criminal case in the adult system completely expunged and removed from your records. Now, I'm not gonna get into this in detail. I'd encourage you to go watch some of my other videos that I have where I talk about expunction and non-disclosure. But essentially, there's a couple of ways to do that. Number one, if you're found not guilty by a jury or a judge, you, you can get it all off your record and expunction. Number two, a dismissal, a case is dismissed, you can get that off your record. Number three, if your case is dropped down to a class C misdemeanor that you receive a deferred disposition, 
expunction and you successfully complete it, there you can get an expunction. And then finally, you can always, uh, if you're young enough or you fit into certain criteria, you can also potentially qualify for a diversion program. And upon completion of that diversion program, you can always, uh, you can also be eligible for a possible expunction, okay? Now look, that's the overview right now of the adult system. Let's talk about the juvenile system for a minute. What is the purpose of the juvenile court? Well, here's the thing. The juvenile court and the juvenile system is actually found in the family code, not the penal code. So as a result of that, there is a presumption that a child should be possible for re be eligible for rehabilitation because the it centrally it essentially is based upon the interest of the child. So there is a presumption. It's a child, right? We're talking about a child that's being charged with a crime. They need to be considered for rehabilitation. So the purpose of the juvenile system is not just for punishment, not just based on deterrence. Now, there's elements of that that can come into play, but there is a presumption of rehabilitation in the juvenile code, all right? Now, the next question is, will my child be arrested? Well, it depends. Sometimes it, it, the result of a juvenile investigation can result in not an arrest. There's technically no such thing as an arrest for a juvenile case. It is called a detention. Okay, they will detain someone. But other times you may not actually be detained. Your, your child may receive a letter telling you that you need to show up and do an intake process with a probation officer over at the juvenile, uh, at the juvenile center, okay? So here's the thing, what happens if your child is detained? What should you expect? Well, this is the part that's more unfair for the kids than it is in the adult system. I'm just gonna tell you, there's a lot of injustice that takes place in the juvenile system because of this. In the adult court, after you're arrested, you must be seen by a magistrate, bond conditions must be set, and a bond is set for you, unless you're charged with capital murder or some other extreme example. But that is not the case under juvenile law. Under juvenile law, you do not have the right to a bond. There is no such thing as a bond. So the only thing you have a right to is a detention hearing before a judge, okay? And here's the thing. If the judge doesn't let you out, let the child out on the first detention hearing, then the next detention hearing is 10 days later. Now your attorney can always potentially speed that up and make that happen sooner, but it's it, you will stay in jail. A child many times will stay in jail longer than an adult will just because of the rules that are in place. And the reality of it is juvenile law gives broad discretion to the judge. A lot of discretion goes to the judge in this situation, which I'm gonna tell you makes it open for being manipulated by the system. And this is the part that we've seen be unfair. For example, we have seen children detained for first time possession of gun charges. Let's say they just had their mom's gun or their dad's gun or they had that and I'm not saying that there are certain instances where you do need to be careful with this sort of thing but if you have a first-time offender no issues at all we've had issues that have, have come up in the past where Tarrant County Juvenile Court judges they have an unwritten policy that they do not let offenders out if it's a gun charge no matter what their criminal history is so imagine showing up to court there. Imagine it's your child. You show up. Child's been good. A honor roll. No problems in the past. Judge says, nope, it's a gun case. I don't care. I'm not letting him out. We're going to make him sit in there for 10 days. Okay? Now, I mean, think about that just for a second. Imagine a 12-year-old sitting in jail for 10 days for a first-time nonviolent offense. That's crazy. Okay? It's crazy to think about it, particularly if there's no aggravating circumstances. Now, the other unfair part of the juvenile system is that they grade the child based on their behavior. They decide based on how well they're behaving as to whether they get out. And what I mean by that, Tarrant County is really bad about this. If their behavioral level is not at a one, if it's at a two, if it's not moved up to this area where they're in full, complete compliance with everything that's being asked of them, then they're not, there's a recommendation for them not to be released. They have to sit in there. So now you're talking about an additional 10 days. So what if the child needs medication? What if the jail says, no, you don't need that medication? What if the child starts to have some issues with that and they begin to get, become very upset? What if they speak up and they're marked down for talking back? Now you're talking about a kid sitting in there for another 10 days, hoping their behavioral level will get to where it needs to be. These are some of the examples of stuff that will happen and we've seen it happen personally in the juvenile system. Now, finally, here's the thing. Juvenile court is very probation driven. What I mean by that, you are required to meet with a probation officer for intake. Now, the important thing about that is they're gonna ask you many questions. If they're trying to make decisions about what's in the best interest of the child, they're gonna be asking about the home arrangements, school, all of that sort of stuff. You, are, you need to answer those questions because they're trying to make sure and determine what's in that child's best interest. But especially if you have an attorney, a juvenile lawyer that's helping you with this, the last thing you need to be doing is talking about the facts of the case. They must still 
prove the case in court against you, okay? Now, finally, can my child get their detention off their criminal record? Well, that's always the goal when a child's been detained. The goal is always, number one, to get them out, and number two, to resolve the case in a way that can get it off their record. For less serious crimes, there's many ways that that can happen. There's diversion programs, there's conditional dismissals, there's many ways that can happen. The weird thing about it is you can get into this gray area where if the case is very serious, very, very serious, and the child is right close to being an adult, sometimes you'll find that they will look to sentence that child as a juvenile, but they'll do something called determinate sentencing, where they want that sentence to carry over into their adult life, where upon completion of their juvenile sentence, the remainder of their sentence they must serve in, uh, in, in literally adult prison, okay? This is why don't ever assume that just because it's a juvenile case, it's not serious. There are many ramifications that can take place on that. So listen, I wanted to give you a quick overview on this and let you know what the understanding is. There's a very big difference between the adult system and the juvenile system. I hope this has been some assistance to you. I promised you an ebook if you waited around to the end of this video, what to do if you've been charged with a crime in Texas. All you gotta do is click through down to the bottom of the link in the YouTube section here that you see. I'll be happy to send that over to you. And I wanna thank you for joining us here today. I hope you liked this video. If so, please like it, subscribe to our channel. We'll send you over more great content just like this. We'll see you next time.